Hello and welcome to Video DNA, where the English is bad and the tutorials I'm good. I'm Iran Tabib and today we're gonna see how we can make this old car wheel smoking. Actually, you can do this to any car, it doesn't have to be old, but what is certain that it's based on a car that is actually just going back regularly. Well, uh, and this cool technique, we're gonna go through Mocha and how we can take its data and apply it in a very, very unique way in After Effects. So let's start. First thing, you need a video of a car that is going backwards. That's it. Uh, that's me sitting in my first car. I don't own it anymore because it's dead. I just released the handbrake and let it slide back really gently. And this is just what you need to do. This is a very tricky angle and you can make it easier on yourself and take another angle, but let's do it anyway. First thing I wanna do is I want to track this layer with Mocha. So I'm gonna select this layer and go to animation, tracking Mocha AE. Mocha is a software that's being installed with After Effects without asking us and it's a little bigger than this screen so no actually let's say yes and no actually we can see all of it in here so it's nice uh, the window is a little bit bigger to show everything uh, maybe I can scale it down no I cannot well um actually what I need to do is first thing I want to go to a frame that I can see the whole wheel so this is the frame, like frame 100, and I'm gonna take the pen tool. They call it the X-Spline tool, but it's actually pretty similar. I'm gonna press uh, and press in another place until I'm gonna get this nice area that I want, I want to track. And I don't want to include the wheel because the wheel is gonna change through time. I want to take something that does not change. So I'm gonna take this and if I drag this one, I can take it a little bit, little bit up. That's nice, that's good, looking good. And that's just about it. And before I start to track, uh, I want to decide which features I wanna track. Now the default is pretty fine, but if, if you have a lot of perspective changing, uh, you should mark perspective and check it on. Try not to because perspective making the track a little bit jumpy and you need to fix it afterwards but never mind that for now. So that's a, that's a mask and that's the area I want to uh, track so I'm gonna begin tracking backwards I'm gonna give it a little bit of time so you can track it. So this is the start of the tracking so I'm gonna put it over here right back at frame 100 and I'm gonna track it forwards until the movie ends. Well after fasting forward all of this I want to check if the tracking is okay and it looks pretty solid so now I want to take this tracking data and I want to export it into After Effects. So now before I export the tracking data, I want to show the planar surface and that's the blue uh, rectangle over here that I can change and manipulate it. And actually what this is gonna do is, this is actually the way to uh, of um, Mocha to show us how the tracking data will appear in After Effects by the uh, corner pin effect. So I want to make something that, that is a little bigger than the wheel itself. And I'm gonna see if that's, that is solid too. Yeah, and it looks pretty good. And now I'm ready to export it. So I'm gonna press export tracking data and I'm gonna select the first option that it's corner pin only. I'm gonna press copy to clipboard and I'm gonna close Mocha I can save it um, and before I'm gonna paste it I'm gonna duplicate the slayer and I'm going to edit paste and now I can see that I have the original video on top of the wheel so that looks pretty nice and what I want to do here is gonna go to uh, pre-compose it layer pre-compose it's down there trust me and I'm gonna call this wheel and I'm gonna leave all attributes because I don't want that effect to get inside 
I'm gonna press OK and now I have the corner pin effect with all those keyframes okay and now I'm gonna press double click and I'm gonna enter inside and I'm gonna see a regular video and what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna paste again the data from Mocha it's still in the clipboard I'm gonna press paste again and I'm making sure that the, tra the marker is in the first frame and I'm gonna get this result and, and now I'm gonna call a very special effect it's called power pin and I'm going to put it right beneath the corner pin and I'm going to shut down the corner pin. And now what I want to do is I want to open the effects, both of them. I'm going to take this up a bit and I'm going to go to the corner pin and to the CC power pin. And I'm going to take the upper left keyframes. I'm going to go to the first frame and I'm going to copy them with control C. And I'm going to go to the top left of the power pin. I'm going to paste them. So I want to take all the data from the corner pin and copy it and, and paste it to the related property of the power pin. Well, actually the power pin is exactly like the corner pin, but it has one magic feature that's going to make this really easier to manipulate. I'm going to take the lower left, copy it and paste it to the bottom left and the lower right from the corner pin copy it and paste it to the bottom right and now what I'm gonna get is actually the same thing but now I can check the unstretch feature and what I'm gonna get is that CC power pin will unstretch the movie so it actually reverse the tracking and if I go back to the car slide composition I can see that it looks that nothing is changed but actually now I have this wheel going backward and forward exactly as the car so now what I want to do is I want to take all of this and I'm gonna pre-compose it so I'm gonna select the layer and go to layer pre-compose and I'm gonna call this slide and I'm gonna press OK and now what I want to do I want to go to the stretch if it's not open you can always press on this button or right click and go to time and time stretch but I like doing it from here because it's gonna open the time stretch anyway and I'm gonna take it down to 25% and actually I recommend 25 50 um, nothing weird like 37 and a half because then it's gonna get jumpy and what I'm gonna get here is the same movement but just a lot faster so I'm gonna go to the car slide I'm gonna turn it off for a second I want to go to this frame when I can actually see the wheel so I'm gonna go inside again and I'm gonna drag it to the left until I can see the full wheel so I can go back now press B again go for, forward in time until this one ends I can actually measure from the inside and I'm gonna press N again and what I'm gonna get is this so we have a wheel that's turning really really fast and what I want to do next is I want to make it I want to cut only the middle section of the wheel so I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna open a new solid no actually I don't need I can just take uh, the pen tool and I'm gonna mask it out so I'm gonna go over here and mask it and I can take this and this and that looks pretty fine but now I can see that actually it's not working because when I pre comp it I didn't select the right features so I'm gonna cut this mask I'm gonna go to layer pre-compose and this time I'm gonna select move all attributes and now I can paste it again and it will work and now the effects you can see that they are not outside I'm gonna feather it out by pressing F and dragging a bit until 34 pixels and now I'm gonna get only the middle part of the wheel and even a little bit of the side we can see if we're working yeah it works pretty well um, I can see that there is a little bit part here that is revealed a little bit of the ground so I can go inside and fix the mask a bit maybe take it up and I can even animate the mask over time until it's perfect uh, but this looks pretty good yeah it looks pretty nice 
Now I want to make a little bit of smoke coming out of the wheel. So I'm going to layer new solid and I'm going to make it comp size and I'm going to call the particular effect. It's a trap code particular. You don't have to do it with this one because you need to buy it, but it's an amazing one. So make sure you have a copy on your computer. I'm going to put the emitter right over here and I'm going to edit it a bit. So first of all, I don't want it to be a point. I want it to be a box and I don't want the direction to be all over the place. I want it to be directional and I want the direction to change maybe to here. No, that's backward. That's forward. Okay. This is the area I want to rotate. Um, and now I want to go to the meter size and I want to make it maybe a little bit wider, but I don't want it to be this high. And I want it to be, I can reduce the amount of the size on the Z axis. And let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's working, but it's really slow and it's not tracking the wheel. So we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna take it over here and I'm gonna put a keyframe on the XY position. I'm gonna go to the last frame and I'm gonna put another one over here, another key keyframe. And now it's gonna move according to the wheel. It's not exact, but it doesn't have to be exact. And now we need to make the particles really, really fast. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go to the velocity and I'm gonna take it up until 700. It looks pretty nice. And I want them to, actually I want them to spread a bit. So I'm gonna spread them a little bit. And maybe I'm gonna rotate it on the X axis. So it's gonna go a little bit more up. And that looks pretty awesome. And now we need to replace it with something that looks a little bit like smoke. So I'm gonna create a new comp. It's gonna be, I think, um, 200 by 200 pixels, and it's gonna be square pixel and 25 frames per second. That's nice. And the duration would be, I think, 30 frames. I'm gonna press OK. And I'm gonna create a new solid. Um, the color doesn't matter. And we're gonna go to fractal noise. And the fractal noise will help us create a bit of a cloudish sprite. So I can change the contrast a bit, the contrast a bit, and maybe I'm gonna take the dynamic progressive and it's gonna be a little bit smoky. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And now I want to put a mask and I'm gonna feather up the mask. And you can see on the edges a little bit of the purple solid color. So I'm gonna go to the blending mode, I'm gonna change it to none, and this will make it go away. And now I want to take the mask, I'm gonna press double M, and then I'm gonna change the expansion so it will not be so hard on the edges. Okay, so a little bit inside, that looks pretty nice. And we want it to change over time. So I'm gonna press the evolution. I'm gonna really go crazy here, like 20 or 30 evolutions. And now every frame will have a different kind of a cloud. So this comp should be named, let's go to comp one, I'm gonna press enter. And I'm gonna call this Sprite. Now I'm gonna go to the car slide I created and I'm gonna put it right in the comp and I'm gonna shut it off because I don't really need to see it and actually this is the time to make this composition a little bit smaller so I'm gonna put it over here right click on the work area and select trim to comp area and now everything will be a little bit more easy to follow so I want to take the uh, the particular layer and now I want to go to the particular layer and I'm gonna go to the particle and instead of a sphere I will select a sprite but I need to go to the texture so we can see it and select the sprite layer and we can see these tiny little things it's not perfectly fine I need to make them bigger 
and I want them to change. So everyone will take a random still frame. And this looks pretty good. And now I want to change the transfer mode to screen. And I want to reduce the opacity of them to 5%, I think. And I'm just going to make the amount of particles a little bit more high. So now we have this thing and it looks nice over here. It needs to rotate a bit and we need to solve this ugly thing. So I'm going to go to, first of all, let's make them rotate. So I'm going to go to the particle. I'm going to go to rotation and I'm going to change the, now to the rotation speed, I think. And let's see if that's working. Yeah, I think it is introduces a little bit of a rotating and but this area looks pretty bad. So I'm going to go to the size of the particle and I'm, I want to change the size over life and maybe in birth it's going to be really, really tiny. But actually, yeah, now it looks pretty nice. And we can reduce the amount of life that they have because you don't see them so much on screen. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, starting to add up. And so maybe I'm gonna take the emitter and I'm gonna add more particles and I'm gonna reduce the overall amount of the layer. And that looks pretty good. Looks pretty nice. Um, actually, maybe it's a little bit too bright over here. So maybe I will change the particle opacity over life. So I'm gonna draw this again and now it looks more natural okay looking pretty good so and now actually i can take this layer and duplicate it and instead of the smoke i can make another particle engine that now it's instead of the, the smoke it's gonna be a little little stone so i'm gonna take the cloud it and i'm gonna change the amount of particles let's say five and i want to go down to the opacity and make it a little bit brighter and i don't care about the opacity over life so i can make it full again and the size over life doesn't really matter and now i want to change the opacity of the layer i don't want it to be in screen mode and I want to change it to black. That's that's looking pretty nice. But maybe I'm gonna make them. Maybe I'm gonna make them smaller. They are too big. Um, and actually, instead of a black color, I can select a color from here. And let's see what we have. Now we have jumping stones, and I think they are a little bit big and too much of them so I'm gonna make them I think maybe two for a second and let's see how this is going okay maybe we can give them a little bit more gravity okay and maybe turn them up a bit so we can rotate them maybe a little bit up and now they will have this nice jump by the need to fall down so I'm gonna go to the physics tab and I'm gonna go to gravity and now they're gonna fall down. Okay, one thing that is absolutely missing is motion blur. And now this looks just right. Not exactly right, maybe the stones should be even smaller. Um, but you can tweak this until you're happy with the result and I'm gonna take everything I'm gonna pre-compose it um, I'm gonna call this animation and I'm gonna go to the position and I'm gonna I'll click it and I'm gonna right wiggle maybe twice a second and we'll have 20 in the amplitude and now it's jumping all over the place. Maybe we're gonna take one and that twice a second. And now I'm gonna scale it up a bit. And I think we're done. 
Uh, we can color correct it. I'm gonna not go further from here. You can take it wherever you want, and this technique actually works every time. Kid, it's amazing, and I hope you learned something. And you can support the site by downloading the project file. Just do it. I'm Lilan Tabib. Thanks for being here with me. I hope you learned something again, and I will see you next time.